Hi everyone. I welcome you all to the session on uh, swing equation problem solving. Uh, we are going to use a modified Euler's method uh, to find out the to obtain the swing curve from the swing equation. Now have a look. Let's have a look at the question. A 60 hertz synchronous generator having inertia constant uh, h that is given as 5 megajoules per MVE and the direct axis transient reactance 0.3 per unit is connected to an infinite bus through a purely reactive circuit. So this uh, this circuit and the system is more or less similar to the one that we discussed in the stability analysis problem uh, with a slight modifications. Here the generator is delivering a real power of 0.8 per unit and reactive power of 0 0.074. So let me write it here. The real power is it is 0 0.8 per unit and your reactive power. So I can take it as P itself. And reactive power is it is 0 0.074 per unit and the infinite bus voltage is 1 per unit. Now the condition is a three phase fault occurs at the middle of one of the lines. Say, let me take a line here. Now at this point, a fault occurs. And the fault is a three phase fault. That means a short circuit fault is occurring at middle of the one of the lines and it is cleared by isolating the faulted circuit simultaneously at both ends. So when the fault occurs here, they are opening this circuit breaker and this circuit breaker and the fault is uh, uh, cleared. Once the fault is cleared uh, by the 0.3 seconds, that means they are taking 0.3 seconds to clear the fault. Once the fault is cleared, again they are put back into the system. This is the condition. Now you are asked to obtain the numerical solution of the swing equation for one second with a step size of 0 0.01 second. That means you have to obtain the solution for t equal to one second. But the range uh, graph should be plotted in terms of steps of 0 0.01. That is 0, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, etc. up to 1. So obviously you have to do a repeated work. No? So this you can put into an iterative system. And when you plot it, you will be getting a swing curve. And one of the iterative methods which we will be using here is modified Euler's method. So before we get into that method, we'll first have, we'll first find out the initial uh, conditions here. Now they have given, so we all know that. Uh, now let us calculate E dash. No, so before fault, that is before fault has occurred, before fault. So, what is the reactance? Reactance is nothing. So, let me take it as x1. So, before fault, the reactance x1 is equal to it is 0.3 plus 0 0.2 plus and 0.3 and 0.3 are in parallel. So it is 0 0.3 parallel with 0 0.3. That is 0. Point, so answer will be 0 0.65. And let us find out the current I. So they have directly given your real power and reactive power. So you can use the formula S conjugate equal to V conjugate into I. So I equal to S conjugate divided by V. What is S? It is a complex power. So real power 0.8. I am putting here minus because of conjugate. So 0.8 minus 0.074J divided by voltage is one angle of zero degree. So when you use this, so now you know V, uh, so and V is also known. No? So now using all these values, you can find out E dash is equal to V into JX into I. So when you substitute everything, you will get the value as 1.17 angle of 26.387 degree per unit. This is the E dash value. Now you can either directly take, so from this itself, when the system is in stable state, you can directly take this as your what? Initial rotor angle. This is, you can take it as initial rotor angle. So let me take the initial conditions here. So first one is initial conditions. So initial conditions like we did for stability analysis, I am going to take only the two parameters. One is uh, rotor angle, another one is frequency. So initial condition is number one, it is delta naught, 
that is nothing but 26.387 degree or in per unit it is 0 0.46055 radians. And what about the change in angle of velocity? Initial change in angle of velocity, initially before occurrence of fault, there is no problem, right? The system is running properly. The machine is running at synchronous speed. So since it is running at synchronous speed, there is no change in velocity. So initially the change in velocity will be equal to zero. Now this is the initial conditions. OK, right now with this setup, uh, let us find out. Uh, so before fault conditions are over, now. A fault has occurred. Now fault has occurred. So fault, what type of fault it is? It is actually a three phase short circuit fault. So if you if you take this. So what happens is you have a generate. If I draw the reactance diagram, this is generator. This is transformer and this is transmission line. This is another transmission line, OK? And this is connected to your infinite bus. Now this is 0 0.3 and this is 0 0.2 and this is 0.3 and this is 0.3. Now what happens is a fault is occurring at this point and that fault is nothing but a short circuit fault. That means it has been short circuited like this. So now what happens? The circuit becomes like this. Because of short circuit, you will be having because it is a short circuit, right? So it will be like this. So the impedance will get split into two halves, 0.15 and 0.15. Now in this case, there the equal reactance is different, right? So the uh, equal reactance here is different one. So when you group this, you can see that some are in series and some are in parallel combination. So now when you this, I'm going to take it as X2. That is, this is your uh, reactance this is your reactance during your fault so it will this will be around 1.8 when you calculate it you will be getting around 1.8 so now what is the uh, maximum power so p max what is the formula p max is equal to it is e p divided by x so if it is p1 means i'm uh, if it is x1 that means it is the condition before the occurrence of fault if i take 2 that means it is the condition during the fault so when i substitute the values for e v by and x2 i'll be getting the answer as 0 0.65 so now what happens once the fault occurs now the equation becomes like this the accelerating power PA is equal to mechanical power minus electrical power. That electrical power is nothing but it is P max. It is P max into sine delta. Now here I am considering after fault. So I'll take P2 max and the angle definition delta angle is delta naught. So what happens here? P max, PM is given as 0.8. Okay. In the question. And P2 max we have calculated as 0 0.65 into sine delta naught. Okay, right. So now we'll go to our oil uh, modified oilless method where there will be two steps. Modified oilless method, there will be two steps. One is predicted method, another, another one is corrected method. In that the first one is predictor method. In that, in that you can see PA is equal to, it is just now without, right? It is 0.8 into 0.65 into sine of delta naught. Okay, now delta one 
P. Why I'm uh, this delta one is the next value. Why I'm indicating uh, uh, P as superscript means it is a predicted value. So predicted value for delta, the formula is delta naught original value plus del omega naught into delta t. This delta t is nothing but your step size. So this delta naught we have already assumed it as 0 0.46. 0, 0.055 5. that is initial delta naught in radians plus since we are using omega you have to use only radians here and del omega naught it is nothing but zero right into step size we have assumed it as 0 0.01 as given in the question so what is delta 1p it is again 0 0.46055 5 radians or in terms of angle it is again 36.387 degree next for delta or del omega 1p that is equal to this is the equation del omega naught plus pi f naught divided by h into pm minus sorry into pa into del t so that is equal to uh, what is del omega naught it is zero plus Pi, you know, it is 3.14, it is 60 hertz, and H is given as 5. PA, it is given in the top, it is 0.8 minus 0 0.65. What is sign delta naught? Delta naught is 26.387 degree into 0 0.01. So you will you will be getting an answer 0 0.1927 radians per second. Okay. Now we will we will we will come we will uh, consolidate all these values. Okay, so I I write it like this. So initial value initially delta naught is assumed as twenty six point three eight seven degree or let me take in degree itself and del omega naught is taken as zero. In predicted value, so delta 1p, since here I have used 0 for initial, the next is I am using letter 1, I mean number 1, along with a, a superscript called p. Delta 1p is 26.387 degree, and here it is delta w1p, that is equal to 0 0.1927 radians per second now with these you have to go for your corrected values so corrected value is nothing but average of these two so for corrected values as usual you have to find out instead of pa i have to find pap that is equal to what is the equation we wrote here? It is 0.8 minus 0.65 sin del naught, correct? So here it will be 0.8 minus 0.65 into sine. Instead of del naught, you will be using the latest one that is del 1p. Next, uh, delta 1c will be equal to delta naught plus del w naught plus del w1 p divided by 2 into delta t so that is equal to so we have just now uh, written here right so what is del del naught i am going to write it in uh, radians it is 46.46055 plus it is 0 and this is 0 0.1927 it is divided by 2 into del t is 0 0.01 so you'll be getting an answer 0 0.4615 radians per seconds uh, similarly we have to do it for del omega 1c so del omega 1c equal to del omega naught plus it is pi f naught by h into pa plus pap divided by 2 
into del t. So we know it is 0 plus pi into 60 divided by 5 into this PA is nothing but uh, it is 19.2684. And what about here? PAP that is also it is going to be same, right? So it is 0 0.8 minus 0 0.65 sine 26.387. So since both are same, I'll be getting the same answer. That is nothing but 19.2684. So it is 19.2684 plus 19.2684 uh, divided by 2 into 0 0.01. So the final answer is uh, you will be getting that you can work it out, right? So it will be uh, 19. So you will be getting some answer. So I just missed it to uh, note down this answer. So you can calculate and note it down. So this way. So this way you have to. So we this is the process. So the process is like this. We started with delta naught and del omega naught. Then we moved to. Uh, Then we moved to delta 1p and delta omega 1p. And the next step, we moved to delta 1c here, delta omega 1c. These are initial values, these are predicted values, and these are credit values. Now you have to continue this loop. So you have to continue this loop until. So uh, in this first step, you have to t equal to 0 0.01, right? Now increment this uh, 0 0.01. You increment this, okay, and then continue. So you have to continue till you reach t is equal to. 0.3 seconds. Why 0.3 seconds? Because in the question it is mentioned as uh, by 0.3 seconds the fault is get cleared. So you have to do this process repeatedly till 0.3 seconds. Now this process, if you are able to plot it in a graph, then that gives you the exact swing, swing curve. So this is enough uh, in terms of understanding the problem. Now, in another video, I have explained how to convert these equations into an equivalent MATLAB code, and I also given a complete code for it. Uh, the video link is also given in the description box. Please uh, make use of it. Thank you.